Um, also this afternoon, we saw then the U.S. Embassy in Moscow issuing this alert, telling American citizens to get out right now, leave immediately, as we appear to be on the edge of World War III. Like, this is all man-made. Like They created this mess. So Klaus Schwab and the Great Reset Agenda just got perhaps its biggest boost ever, thanks to the economic terrorism that was carried out by the globalists yesterday. Um, allies of the United States government, allies, are now saying that the United States is responsible for carrying out the largest eco-terrorism attack in history, destroying the Nord Stream pipelines in the Baltic Sea. No, according to the Swedish government, some seismic activity on this. The Swedish seismologists detected one explosion that registered 1.9 on the Richter scale. Here are the actual printouts from this. And the other that registered 2.3 on the Richter scale. The seismologists also said they saw zero evidence of earthquakes. So these explosions had nothing to do with earthquakes. What's more, do you know many earthquakes that have an explosion associated with them? I find this very interesting about the pipelines, though. So take a look at this evidence. This, these explosions took place quite some distance apart from each other. So as you can see here on this map, according to German authorities, these were, these were targeted and they were far apart from each other. Notice the distance here. That is not close. These do not occur naturally. These were human explosives with one purpose. Purpose was to cut off supplies to Europe and destroy the European economy. And they're succeeding. The EU today says there is zero chance. So the European Commission is saying there's zero chance that this was an accident. It was intentional sabotage. Make no mistake about it. Western media, of course, this is amazing to me. Western media, of course, immediately tried to blame it on Vladimir Putin. And they used a photo from 2015 in multiple news articles how Putin could have carried out the attack. And they use a photo from 2015 like in a submersible in the Black Sea. Like he's going down to like there, he did these things a couple of times, right? He would go out in the Black Sea and the Baltic Sea separately. So that was the Telegraph using that photo. And then, not to be outdone, the awful news outlet Reuters, which if you ever read anything by Reuters, you should immediately run the other way and get a, and take a shower. Um, they also used a similar picture, but this one from 2013, this time, Putin was in the, uh, the, was actually in the Baltic Sea, in a separate submersible. And so they're making the point, and in this article, and they even say Russian submarines are very well practiced at this sort of thing. How he's basically, they're so, they're, they're good at this. You know who else is good at this? The United States. They're quite excellent at it, by the way. Putin blew up his own pipeline, is what they want to believe. He spent seven, $11 billion building a pipeline, years to build. If you have a, by the way, if you have an IQ higher than 40 points, you'd realize this is ridiculous. That is propaganda. You would have to be brain dead to believe that Putin had anything to do with this. And last night after our broadcast, Tucker Carlson brought up a really excellent point on his show about leverage that I hadn't thought about at the time. Listen to his take on this. So Vladimir Putin may be evil. They tell us that he is evil. But is he stupid? Probably isn't stupid. And yet, and here's the strange part, if you are Vladimir Putin, you would have to be a suicidal moron to blow up your own energy pipelines. That's the one thing you would never do. Natural gas pipelines are the main source of your power and your wealth, and most critically, your leverage over other countries. Europe needs your energy, now more than ever with winter approaching. If you can't deliver that energy, then countries like Germany have no need to pay attention to what you want. You're in the middle of a war, an all-hands-on-deck war, so you need all the leverage you can get. Under these circumstances, there is no chance you would blow up Nord Stream 1 or 2. Not now, obviously. Hmm. Great point, right? It's the leverage. It's a point I hadn't thought about after last night's broadcast at the time, but think about it, right? You, you take this away, you take away his leverage, his ability, as you said, to turn off and on the spigot. Right. To say, well, it's, under, it's down for maintenance right now. We need these parts from Siemens in Germany, and then we can get it back up and running, and then we'll let you have some gas. You want to pull back on your sanctions against us, and maybe we'll, have, we'll put some of this uh, gas back in your homes. I just have to wonder if the United States and the Western media thinks, well, we've been successful at blaming most things on Putin up to now, so we can just keep going. Yeah. Most people accept that he's doing all the bad stuff. 
I think they I think they think people are really stupid. I really do. I mean, because yesterday, literally on the same day when this explosion happens or the day before, they announced the new Baltic line, the, the new Baltic pipe, which literally comes from Poland through Denmark into Germany. Meanwhile, according to German newspapers, the CIA had warned Germany that Ukraine was going to attack the pipeline. This is a bombshell story. I mean, this might be the biggest story of all. The CIA warned Germany about a planned attack on the different pipelines over the summer, according to Der Spiegel. There were already indications. The CIA was telling them that Ukraine was going to attack the pipelines. Really? What a bunch of garbage. You think that, first of all, Ukraine has nuclear-powered submarines and could pull something off like this? No. The answer is no, without any help from NATO guiding them to do it or using them as a proxy in order to do it. You would be a fool to believe. NATO Secretary General uh, Jens Stoltenberg says that there was clearly sabotage, and he's right about that. Uh, these pipes are designed. If you look at the physics of these pipes, as I did today, they are, they, are, they are designed to withstand just about anything that you can throw at them. <laughs> Literally, the steel pipe itself has a wall of 4 centimeters, 1.6 inches. It's coated with steel reinforced concrete up to 11 centimeters thick. Each section of the pipe weighs 11 tons, which goes to 24 to 25 tons after the concrete then is applied to it. Then, these are designed to withstand a massive ship anchor which they have to deal with on a regular basis, and so they test them against this. You know those massive ship anchors? Have you ever seen like a I don't know, an aircraft carrier? Have you ever seen a cruise liner with those giant anchors? Right? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's designed so that if one of those falls off the ship, it bounces off of the pipeline. So again, yes, clearly sabotage. So here's the question though, how were they blown up? This is really the ultimate question. So I spoke to military and intelligence sources today that said that the United States would have carried out this terrorist attack in one of two different ways. A, by using Navy SEALs who would have descended and then placed explosives on the pipes and then detonated those explosives remotely. That seems less likely given the advanced technology they are now using. But it's far more likely, they said, that the Americans used underwater drones launched by U.S. submarines in the, Balkan, in, the, uh, in the Baltic Sea. That's probably how it happened. So an investigation would clearly show drone fragments among other pieces of evidence. We also know that U.S. warships who with, with the, that have these capabilities were just seen in the area days ago. Just days ago. And by the way, the largest of those ships would have been able to carry this attack out easily, coordinating with submarines. And I'm sure these cushy, the cushy relationship with NATO that they have with these investigations, they could probably ask Americans, you know, what submarines were in the area, right? NATO could easily figure this out if they had an investigation. What submarines were in the area at the time? Who was on board? What were they doing there? You just happened to be swimming by? <laughs> like, what were you guys doing on the night of September 26th, 2022? Where were you guys? Where were your nuclear submarines at that time? Where were your special drones, the underwater uh, drone uh, technology that we're using? I'm sure they'll get a straight answer out of it. Germany, though, is furious this morning. German officials are saying it was an act of sabotage. They're not pulling any punches. Before the terrorism attack, German officials were calling on the German citizens were calling on their government to turn on Nord Stream 2, literally 24 hours before this attack. Thousands were taking to the street, demanding the launch of Nord Stream 2, calling on the government to turn it on. We are going to freeze. We don't have firewood. We don't have any other way to heat our home right now. Turn it on. Stop playing politics with our lives. Now they don't have a choice. That, that choice has been taken away from them. It's really, really tragic.